been in here. Enough. It's always Christmas at Miss Casey's Christmas Store and more. With the birth of Christ just about two months away, this seasonal store needs extra help. Contrary to what people think, this work goes on all year round. I have about a dozen people in my core group, and then I bring on, probably at present, I have about 40 people working for me. And I just hired on a few more people. Thanks to a mini oil boom, Kathy Harrison says she's added additional workers. But other retailers in the area are scrambling to find people who are willing to do the work. We're scraping now. It's, it's do or die this week. We have to hire this week to be ready for the holidays. Store managers like Lisa Bennett say applicants don't understand the retail reality of the holiday season, busy nights and weekends. We aren't your Monday through Friday, you know, 9 to 5 job. We start at 3.30 a.m. unloading trucks and stocking the trucks before the guests come in the building. And then, of course, we're busy nights and weekends, So, and that is to accommodate our guests. And a lot of people don't want to work those hours. Plus, with additional retailers sprouting up in Odessa, there's less of a pool to choose from. We still need about 30 more team members to be ready for this holiday for Black Friday, which, like I said, that's three weeks away. So once they hire everyone they need, stores say they'll still be scrambling to keep up with more holiday shoppers. This is a horse farm with only a handful of horses. It didn't used to be this way. Just constant activity. We had horses coming in and out. But now it's a grim reality. It's a big investment of both time and money raising horses for either racing or showing. That Lone Star Park in Austin is the biggest one in the state, and with more venues like it closing, public interest is waning, which has sent the breeding business reeling. You just can't make any money with horses right now because there is no market for them. Robin tells us there was a time when none of these pens were empty. They had to turn horses away. Now they'll be lucky if they get any. It costs about $200 a month per horse to take care of it. That's spread over a two-year process to get them ready for their careers. This isn't just a business. It's a way of life. Now that that way of life is threatened, children who grew up in it are forced to move on. I used to take care of all my mom's horses for her, do all that, but then it just wasn't enough anymore, so then I got me a part-time job. Over. With races and shows becoming scarce, the money can't be made back that's been put into the horses. Robin says she's had to lay off ranch hands and manage the farm on her own. Setbacks are being felt everywhere in horse feed, veterinarians, transporters, and farriers who shoe the horses. Right now, four and five a day is average. And used to uh, be so booked that I couldn't stop at seven or eight. When people think of Texas, they imagine the cowboy ever vigilant on his trusty steed. But unless something changes, the sun could set on this state's horse business. Reporting in Odessa, Nick Lawton, News West 9. There's stakes all over. We are not opposed to drilling. We don't want to incorporate, but we feel like we have no other choice right now. The stakes are high in Gardendale because of the stakes coming out of the ground. They haven't given me any official documents whatsoever just to tell me that they can come in here and do this. Delia Arthur has lived in the small community of Gardendale for 15 years, and she's just one of many residents who have found themselves fighting for land they already own. The company Barry Petroleum started staking land for drilling late last year. Legally, the company has the right to lease minerals underneath Gardendale. For the next 15 or 20 years, there's going to be a pump jack, and a carve out of at least an acre on these people's property. And according to Texas state law, they're not required to offer them a penny for it. That's because Gardendale is considered a rural community, meaning there are no restrictions for drilling in place because there's no form of local government. And there's more. Property owners own surface rights, and that includes water, water that Barry Petroleum can use for drilling. It's going to impact uh, uh, an already fragile uh, water table uh, significantly. Uh, they're getting ready to do ration and admit them. What do you think it's going to do to us? And those aren't the only concerns residents have. Oil spills that could possibly happen from the tanks, um, truck traffic coming and going to pick up the oil, the caliche dust for one thing is just awful. With the force of law we could uh, challenge them and have them do the things that they do uh, in such a way that it fits into our community better. The company has offered landowners $10,000 for using their land, but signing that agreement waives any liability from the company in the future. 
Landowners say it's not right and they'll do whatever it takes to make sure their property and their way of life is protected. Really not a happy camper and I think someone needs to get our state legislatures to do something about the surface rights owners because this is not fair whatsoever. It's really up to the community. If we don't do anything, they are going to. News West 9 tried contacting Barry Petroleum, but they couldn't be reached for comment. Reporting in Gardendale, Gina Martinez, News West 9. A dump truck and a Volkswagen so badly mangled, it's hard to tell what happened here. The vehicle drifted into the northbound lane and was struck head on by the truck and it drug it for, you know, a few hundred feet. Trooper John Barton says for some reason Deborah Beck veered into the northbound lane of FM 1788 this afternoon and collided with this dump truck hauling a trailer. Making this tragedy even worse, her three grandkids were in the car with her. Beck was following her son and daughter-in-law when the violent crash happened. This is one of those tragic incidents, one of the worst possible scenarios where actually the family's on scene and witnesses and it makes it very difficult for everybody involved. Inside the dump truck, 56-year-old Edwin Timmer. His wife also happened to be following him a few miles back. Uh, he was able to talk to his wife. I believe his wife was following him and uh, we know that he was talking to her after the crash and then shortly after that uh, both vehicles were engulfed in flames. Timmer wasn't able to get out of the truck in time. He, along with Beck and her three grandchildren, died at the scene. DPS troopers identified the kids as 8-year-old Tiffany Klein, 3-year-old Jeremiah Rodriguez, and 2-year-old Sebastian Savage. Tonight, there are still lingering questions as to how this could have happened. It's still under investigation if speed was a factor. You know, it's just one of those deals to where uh, we still have to piece together some of that information, get the full details. We don't know why she drifted across into the oncoming lane. Uh, that's something that probably we won't ever know. The Long Center honored Austin music legends today in a program featuring, of course, live music. Yeah, yeah, now, tonight, giving you everything Sounds good. Every year, the Austin Music Memorial inducts 10 new members. All the nominees are chosen by three criteria. They must have been deceased for three years prior to the nomination, have contributed to Austin Music, and have been from, worked, or lived around the Austin area. This year's inductees include Janice Joplin, Stevie Ray Vaughn, and Clifford Antone. What was once a balcony now lies upside down as shards of wood. Omar Fleming says it was just after 4 a.m. Sunday. Everybody was just having fun, and there's about 30 people on that balcony, and I guess too much weight. I just couldn't handle it. He says he looked up and saw the balcony collapse. Just wood cracking and just a big old rumble, like a big rumbling sound, man. People were trapped, including Fleming's 37-year-old sister. We had to raise it up and, and get it off somebody's leg, and everybody was bleeding. And, and, it was bad. Officials say 23 people were rushed to area hospitals, some with broken bones, others with internal injuries. Five people remain in the hospital as of Sunday night. We're told the balcony was built just a week ago. We've just come out to secure the scene and marked it as a dangerous condition so no one would go in there. Ron Potts with Code Compliance says the city will be investigating both the property owner and whether the balcony was built within code with a past inspection. You, you've got to have permits and this is what it's all about. It's about people's safety uh, that you know you can only put so much load on, on a, a patio built originally for a couple of people that live there, not for dozens of other people coming into it. For Fleming, he remembers the night as terrifying, but grateful that his sister's okay. Glad to be alive because I was right by them stairs like, <laughs> whoa, man. A domestic dispute ends with one man dead as a Williamson County deputy was forced to make a split second decision. Investigators say the deputy shot 30 year old Ryan Blake Justice when he advanced toward the deputies carrying a rifle. Last night, they responded to 200 Harbor Cove right here after 911 operators received several hang up calls. When deputies called the residents, they spoke to a child who said his mother and father were physically fighting. Deputies tell us when they arrived, Justice came out of the house with a rifle. That's when the deputy took the shot. Justice died at the scene.
Starlight One Productions held its first ever Austin Gospel Music Festival. Whether you're into good music or good fun, there was a little bit here for everybody. Kenny Dorham's Backyard opened its doors to all denominations this Saturday. The event featured local and upcoming talent from Austin with contemporary and traditional gospel to Christian rock. The festival was a success and plans to return next summer. water and did not resurface for 10 minutes. It was arrived to the Mentopolis Bridge about eight minutes later. Two person teams travel up to 35 miles, stopping at checkpoints around Austin. At each stop, the teams are challenged by a funky obstacle or task. Galaxy Highland Movie Theaters, more than 150 folks watch the teams vying for glory in 3D. The tickets cost about 20 bucks. Both countries in this final had never won the World Cup before. A uh, big congrats to Spain. I struggled to be here. I struggled a lot, but I didn't give up. Uh, now I'm living an American dream. I want to cry, uh, but I don't want to show that I'm a baby. I want to stand strong. And it just uh, it shows how thankful I am. We've only seen a small number of BWI arrests and citations. And as the numbers are expected to increase, Officer West Williams says it's important to be safe. At Lake Austin, Claudia Mickle, KITV News.